Hello everybody, welcome to another live stream. Uh, yeah, I just got back actually from um, Missouri. Um, my husband and I just invested in a little, little tiny, tiny A-frame on the lake and it is in desperate need of help. So I basically spent all last week cleaning out about 40 bags of garbage. So not doing much carving, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think the people who lived there before were definitely hoarders. Um, they had a little bit of an issue. So yeah, it was very disgusting, like full gas mask and everything. Uh, check my Instagram. I actually put a video of me up there and I've got a, the, the image of the whole A-frame behind me and just piled with stuff. And we're talking like 350 square feet. It is tiny house living. So anyway, I think about maybe making it into an Airbnb or something. So, uh, so welcome everybody. Good to see you. Um, today, I know I was really trying to, I mean, I just got back last night, late last night, um, uh, on a flight back from Missouri. And so I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the live stream this week. So I thought, and actually up until about an hour ago, I still didn't know what I was going to do, but I did want to do more of a beginner, um, lesson. Um, and more, because I think I've, I've sort of gotten some very advanced ones, some pretty intense projects. So I'm going to sort of lighten it up a little bit and get into more, a um, little bit of a, the basics. Uh, but what I'm going to actually get into this time is talk about perspective. Um, get everything into perspective. Um, talk about how to draw perspective. I always love doing this and I love the sort of tricks of using like the horizon lines and everything. So I'm going to show how to draw that way and then I'm going to show you how to carve it in shallow relief so it gives a little bit more of that illusion of depth also. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to play around with that. Um, hello. Oh, Larry from Portland. Good to see you. All right, um, you know what I think I'm going to do though? I'm going to turn off, I'm going to actually have the heat on. Let's turn it on because it makes some weird noise behind me. Let's see if that actually did it. Hold on. Did it. Okay, we're back. <laughs> All right, so I want to just show you what I've got here. Um, this is pretty much just a board and I've got two locations of what you call vanishing points. Okay. So those are best basically, sorry, the, the line of sight really is <clears throat> actually I, I messed up on that. So there's a line of sight and then there's vanishing points. Those are different, but, um, um, and it's really just cool to, to kind of make the, the tricks work. And so I just made, I just, pick two random spots here and I've got a piece of paper taped down and I'm just going to play around with it and see what happens. I'll do it, use a dark pen here. So I want to first of all, like on this, I'm just going to take uh, off center from these two points. I'm just going to draw a, um, let's do it right down here. So just a vertical line. I'm just going to play around with it. So that's going to be the, the corner of a square that I'm going to make. And so it's really a lot of fun to do this. So from there, I'm going to take the top of that and I'm just going to extend that. I'm going to line it up along that X that I drew there on that side. All right, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to line it up with this. And it's just really, really fun. You can make it just a square. Or you can make it a rectangle. All right, so that's basically the start of it. So let's say if you wanted to draw a building or something. Um, so this is the corner of the building. It's basically going back that way, back that way. Um, and so let me just do another one. So I'm going to make the top of the building. And so let's just say we're going to make a box. All right, so I'm going to do again. I'll just make some random position right there. All right, but they are all pointing. All three of these lines are pointing and eventually will disappear right at that point. I'm going to do another one from this side. And so what this is doing is basically defining the top of the box. 
All right, and I have some little too many extensions, but now I'm going to draw the end of it right there and the end of it right there. Okay, so these are just simple vertical lines. <clears throat> okay, so um, do you see what I've done here? Basically, all of these lines, this line, this line, and this line, all point towards that. This line, this line, and this line all point towards that point. And it's really kind of cool how that ends up really, just by drawing that, it's really looking um, uh, very three-dimensional. So I'm going to show you um, another thing here. So let's do it. Let's do another way here. I'm going to take and line like that. Then I'm going to take the same thing. Okay, and I honestly, I spent a long time since I actually studied this. I've done done some of it, but but I'm trying to remember. I think the the horizon line is basically if you make a line straight from from point to point. That's basically where your eye is. I can't remember exactly how they determine that, but I know these are called vanishing points. And then there is something called a line of horizon, and I just can't remember if the line of horizon is kind of centered. Basically, it's like at a, at a point. So imagine that's going all the way across there. So that would be line of horizon would be right there. That would be where your eye is looking at it. So with this one, you don't actually see the top or the bottom, but again, it really gives that um, illusion of depth. Okay, so you're looking back at it like that. Um, I kind of like the ones where you actually see the top because it just uh, shows it a little bit more more clearly. Um, and then I also wanted to show something about, uh, so we're talking about vanishing points and, and all that, that's, that's fine. Um, but I wanted to show something. Let me see if I can actually see a example of it. Uh, bear with me a second. Let me see if I can find this. Okay. Another way of showing um, perspective is basically if you're looking at something like this particular one is a basket and if you're looking at it from the bottom, because this is actually meant to be viewed from underneath, you see how the bottom curve has this oval there, and then you have this also reflecting the same curve as that. It actually is a little, should be a little bit more aggressive because it's a little higher. Again, you use the same kind of concept where you're looking at it from here and you can only see partial. So let me just show you what I'm talking about with that. Okay, so I'll just do the same. I'll, I'll draw a basket. Okay, so let's just say we've got an oval. Okay, so an oval on itself, eh, hard to tell what's going on with that. But then if you take that and you splay that up like that and splay that up like that, and then this next curve is this curve also, but Again, same thing, it's actually going to be raised up a little bit higher, so it's a more aggressive curve. So it's going to give that illusion. Now, if you if you want to get really accurate with it, you'd actually do, do a full um, ellipse. All right, I don't want to do this because it's going to kind of get confusing visually, but that this would be an ellipse, but you'd only really see the top. All right, because the basket then would be like that, okay? And that would really give the illusion, see, just flat like this, it, it looks like it's very shaped. And that's just simply because this ellipse. Um, there's actually something that I recently carved. This is, <clears throat> this is one of the one of the lessons um, and it's a little teacup. So this is very similar. So we've got the the ellipse there. We've also got an ellipse there. All right, that continues kind of tucks behind. 
and then you've got um, you actually have a second ellipse which is the um, the top of the T okay so the same concept you basically have these a series of ellipses that um, just really really show dramatic depth okay <clears throat> anyway that was just a uh, just going to show you a little bit of that. Um, it's just a lot of fun to play. And you can make these into buildings. You can make them into whatever you wanted to. Uh, a lot of times if you're doing scenery, um, you know, or you're taking a building and you're making a perspective, just play around with it and, you know, and change the position of the vanishing point because if you're looking at it from a higher view, um, then you're going to be viewing it um, at a different location. So, for instance, like, if from if I keep the vanishing point up here, so let's do this one. Keep the vanishing point there, and then it's really angled. So basically, it's like you're looking at this from a bird's eye view. You're looking at it from a from a drone perspective. <laughs> Okay, and then same thing then. Oh, I think I'm going to run into the one above there. All right, now for the um, the upper edge. Yeah, I'm going to run into the above one. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, you get the concept. There to there. And from there to there. Okay, oh, just barely. Okay, so basically this line, this line, and this line all point towards this point. This line, this line, this line all point towards that point. And then you're looking at it from the top a lot more, a lot higher, um, higher up. Anyway, a lot of fun. Okay, so what I did was, and as I said, I was going to try to keep this um, a beginning lesson. Um, I always want to sort of add to it and go, oh, let's just make a little bit more challenging. Let's try this. And anyway, so I've got these <laughs> two shapes, and I'm just going to show you some kind of tricks of how to carve it in um, and add a little bit more of that dimension. All right, let me just adjust, adjust cameras a bit. Okay. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the outline with uh, at the outside with a V-chisel and I'm going to use the large V-chisel uh, uh, because I really want to try to get quite deep with this. And I'm just going to go around. I'm going to leave that line visible. Now you can also use a mallet to do this, but I'm, and because this is relatively simple designs, um, it shouldn't be too challenging to just go around with the bee chisel. Uh, I say leave the line visible, but I just kind of carved that line away. <laughs> we'll just shift it over a little. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going downhill with my bee chisel from there to there, there to there, and then from here, there to there. And there to there because there is a possibility if I went like this all right and this is a, a just really a, a, a grain issue I could end up kind of snagging that area if I went in that direction because if you look at the v-chisel again there's it's basically two sides one cuts with the grain one cuts against the grain so it's a good idea to maybe um, look at like the some of the earlier exercises like the donut exercise just so you can kind of get a concept if you haven't um, carved much um, to get a concept of that grain direction issue and so I'm just trying to get the outline done and really just so I can get into doing some shaping of it. All right, and now right here, it, the V chisel likes to slip a lot. So right here, what I like to do is either when I'm just about ready to go to there and I don't want it to slip in there, 
I can either do this as kind of walking the tool, and basically it's going just inching it in. All right, it's not going to be a really clean cut by doing that, but it will prevent it from slipping too far. Or you can take a mallet and then basically hit it very lightly as it reaches that edge. And so I'm trying to go as deep as possible with this, but what you might want to do is maybe go like half the depth first and then come back and go maybe a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Uh, sometimes trying to get the full depth the first time through is a little challenging. And so, and also one thing I always recommend to my beginner students is really try to learn how to use your um, right and left hand, how to lead with your right and left hand. And because if you've noticed, just in this one relatively simple design, I've gone back and forth quite a few times, you know, coming this way and then coming downhill that way and switching, leading with both hands. And it really, really helps because, um, you know, there are going to be times when just from a grain direction, it, it can be very, very challenging. All right, and I think what I'm going to do now, <laughs> excuse me, I'm going to try to find, actually, I packed up all my tools, so I don't have a lot of tools with me. I sent them all to Michigan. I'm going to be teaching there next week. And let's see, I think I'm just going to take this uh, number 314. And I'm just going to take a little bit down along the edge. Normally I like to take a, a more curved gouge, but I'm really trying to make this very subtle. Okay, so just take a little bit, go right down to there. I'm really just relieving the outer edge a little bit. The problem is by using a flat one like this, number three, it does want to kind of catch and snag. So... You may want to use something, if it catches and snags too much, you may want to use a number 714. That's usually what I do for outlining this, but just take a small amount and kind of nibble away at it. Go all the way around. All right, now I don't like to do this. I don't like to turn this um, and cut towards myself. So I'm gonna finish coming along here and then I'm gonna rotate the wood. Never a good idea to cut towards yourself. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm basically going just about the depth of that V chisel. Okay, so I'm just going to go continue along. So I'm probably going about maybe a half an inch away from the design. You can go further away too. And um, because I'm, I'm not going that deep into the background. I'm, I'm, because I'm really trying to, you know, keep it, keep it um, from getting too deep. Because I really want to still be able to show the kind of perspective tricks. And if I take it too deep, then it's just I'm going to be able to show a lot of the actual depth rather than tricks. So I just want to kind of hold back and, and limit that. Okay, now what I'm going to do, just to really keep this area, the edges really clean, I'm going to take a flat chisel and I'm going to go right down along that. Because I want this to be pretty crisp along the edges. All right, I'm just defining this flat chisel. Now I can use a larger flat chisel, but this is actually, bear with me, I'm going to change the label on here if I can find it. There we go. 14 millimeter flat chisel. Now you can use a larger one too, uh, just because it's a larger surface. Now what I'm doing, I'm taking this and... Um, here, I'll show you up here. What I'm doing is basically I'm taking with my thumb 
on it and I'm leaning into it and then pressing and rolling forward. And so basically set it in there and lean forward, roll it forward, and roll it forward. And that kind of ensures that it stays um, pretty straight. And the thing is also, again, since I'm basically lining it like this and I'm looking straight down, and by looking straight down, my eye is actually making sure it's not veering one side or the other. So I'm really keeping straight above it so I can keep an eye on what's going on. Now this tool, this is a file or Swiss made fishtail flat chisel. I generally don't like using this one as much, right? Because it's a double bevel and I actually prefer single bevel. But um, I think this was just the quickest one I could grab and it's working. But one thing you want to maybe consider because it is a double bevel, you may have to tip it slightly to actually make a vertical wall, all right? If I just go straight down, it's probably gonna be a very slight angle. I mean, you know, so slight that it probably isn't gonna make much difference, but you may wanna keep that in mind as you're doing this. Just do a slight angle, not so much where you're actually undercutting, but just so that that final wall is actual vertical. And just roll it forward. You set it in, roll it forward. Okay, so around the circle, I'm going to see if a 314 will work. It looks like it will. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm basically starting the cut there, and then I'm also going to start it there. Because what happens is, if I make a cut here and I walk it this way, there's a tendency, by the time I get there, it's going to want to kind of split. And there's, there's a real slight possibility that it could end up splitting the top of that off. So what you want to do is go like this and then down, but you see, I don't know if you can see that, but it splits there and splits there, but that's in the background, so that's okay. And then again, walk it along and roll it forward. Oops, that's a 314. Just keep walking it along. Make, try to make it as clean as possible. All right, now get about the halfway point. Start here then. And then do the same thing here. But I'm only really dealing with the background. I'm not going to do this yet. All right, so hopefully that will connect nicely. Uh, there's a little bit of a step there. Okay, so now, once I do that, then I'm gonna go back around with the number 314 and really release that, all of that wood. And then we're gonna have a nice crisp edge. Now, if you notice, um, what I'm doing, I'm really trying to make very definite cuts. And that's one of the things that happens quite often if you're just starting wood carving, especially with basswood, is that um, it's very easy to get the fuzzies, like along the lower edge here, just to, to have a lot of little bits of wood sticking and really hard to get it clean. And I see that a lot in my beginning classes. And so what I'm, if you notice what I'm doing, basically V-chisel, definite solid vertical cut, and then just a simple cut in. If it takes three, four, five times to get to where you need to go, then there's more of a chance of it just uh, getting really fuzzy, coming back and going and fixing it and fussing with it, like this one right here, which it didn't release enough. All right, there's more of a chance if it takes you three or four times to get the depth, then 
there's each each time you try to make that vertical wall each time you come back in there's more possibilities of getting that little fuzzy so think about when you're doing this that you're making really solid defined cuts decisive and that really just takes time it takes time with the tool in your hand um, it takes time just <clears throat> with experience of how how hard do I need to press this tool to get that full depth and all of that. So it just takes time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it does make a big difference in just solid, unhesitant cuts. Okay. So now we've got these two pieces. All right, so now we've got two shapes. We've got one square and then one, this, uh, this ball here. I'm gonna take my V chisel and just to separate so that I know the layers. All right, let's just stick with that number eight and I'm gonna come down here. And what I'm doing is I'm going on this side I'm going on the side of the line that is basically going underneath. Okay, so I'm going to leave that line visible. But I'm going to carve on the side of the line that is right where the, the box is. Now I'm going to go about half the depth of what I've taken the background. All right, and then finish it off in this direction. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead now and divide this up so we have two complete shapes. I'm going to take this number 314 and continue. So I want to make sure that it really connects with that cut that I made first. Connects there and then rolls forward. And again, I'm going about half the depth that I've taken, taken the background. And that may adjust, you know, as we start to kind of discover what's happening and how deep we can go and all of that. But for now, just, just for easy work, I'm going to go and just say about half the depth. Okay, so what's kind of neat about this, <laughs> just with these lines here, it already looks very three-dimensional. So, and then and with the outer edges and everything. So this already appears like it's a box. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, so we're going to have a, a ridge there, all right, a high corner there, a high corner there, and a high corner there. But these two lines, those two surfaces, are going to be slightly um, angling back, all right? Now, obviously, there's probably maybe an eighth of an inch depth here, so there's not a lot to, um, not a lot of room to do that, but I'm just going to play around with this. And I know that I'm probably going to have to redraw those lines. And let's just see what happens. And you know what? I'm going to use a tool <laughs> that I don't have. Uh, no, I don't have it. Um, I, you know, I've got these little numbers on the screen that, that identify tools, and I don't have a number two. Mm, sorry, we'll just not have it. Anyway, <laughs> this is now a number 220. <laughs> so when I use the very large tool, that's what it is. Yes, I have to add that. I wasn't expecting to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole surface and I'm just going to angle this back. I'm not going to touch this corner though, but I'm going to angle this whole surface back as if it was a, a flat plane. Now the reason I'm using a number two is because I'm really trying not to leave many tool marks. I'm just basically like a hand plane, just shaving that back. And I'm going to take this very close to that background. Okay, so right now I'm kind of going across the grain. Okay, the grain is going this way. So I'm going across the grain and it's actually if you have really sharp tools, it does a very nice job. Now you could also come downhill 
basically just carve with the grain. Or you could do a combination of both. And I'm trying to get this whole surface pretty flat. So if we if you would take a, a straight edge, basically angle it like that, you don't want to have any bumps in the center, which I do right there. So I'm going to take this very close to the background. So as long as on here, oh yeah, I need to be careful I'm breaking that up. As long as there is a, a still a shadow line here, we're good. And we might need to even accentuate that shadow line a little bit later if I take it deeper. All right, but that basically kind of defines the edge of the box, so it doesn't necessarily have to have any edge, any real major edge, as long as it's just a shadow line. Okay, so you see I'm actually carving away the... Um, carving away all my lines, but I'm, I'm just staying close to that center line, but just a hair away from it. Leave the line visible, basically. So what I'm doing, I'm basically doing this kind of slicing motion across the grain, but oh, downhill. So just take your time with it, take a little bit at a time just to try to get this nice smooth surface and I think what I'm going to do is draw that line on there again I'm going to use a straight edge but I draw that line on there again just visually so I can keep track of what's happening here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this surface and angle it down and the reason I'm not doing this surface first is because this angle and this angle kind of need to, you know, have uh, th this surface and this surface have to need eh, <laughs> have to discover where they're going, and then that is going to basically appear. <laughs> it's going to find its own position based on what I'm doing with this wall and that wall. Anyway, uh, if that doesn't make sense, just uh, just wait. <laughs> we'll be there in a second. Okay, so now. And I come along here and then so I'm at, at this point this ball right here is kind of in the way all right but I need to try to shape this surface as if that didn't exist as if this whole square actually finished right there all right so I still I don't want it to sort of go in and out or up or down or anything like that. I want to have this as a flat surface as much as possible as if it was just simply the same as this but going this direction. Sometimes when you have an obstacle in the way it tends to kind of reshape what's underneath it and you want to try to avoid letting that happen. When you try to sort of maneuver around something, it tends to create its own little shape. So again, I'm going to be either going across the grain or downhill this way, or even better, kind of a combination of across the grain and then kind of scooting downhill. Okay, now again, this edge there, really want to try to make that uh, as close to that background as possible. Let's see if this is going to show up a little bit better there. Yeah. All right. So sometimes if it's hard to tell if this surface is, is correct, I want to just take a straight edge and kind of get an idea of whether it's still nice and flat, if there's any bumps. 
And sometimes with something like this, because it's really hard to see, let's just close my eyes and actually feel if there's any bumps. And there is one right there. There's a lot of times when my eyes can be very deceiving. All right. Now yeah, that's still looking a little strange, but I'm now I'm going to take and draw again. I'm going to connect, reconnect this line. All right, it's sort of gone downhill here, downhill here, and now I'm going to take that upper triangle and I'm going to take and do the same thing, but make a, a flat plane. Pretty much going. Across that surface. Now I'm going to try to get as close up to that as possible, but this is kind of a, a strange um, way of showing corners. But I'm going to try to get right up to that corner where I have that line. And sometimes the shadow just uh, from creating these high peaks is enough, but quite often in very shallow carving, it's not enough. And now as it is, it's kind of, it's, I guess that that corner there is really, right now, the only thing that's really showing that is the fact that I drew lines on it. So if I take the lines away, it's not going to work. I need to get a better I take the lines away, the box kind of is still there, but it's really, it really tends to disappear. All right? So, I mean, you, you might have to just sort of line it up. And, I mean, it's, it's there, but it's really not that vibrant in the, the clarity of it. And so there is another kind of trick. I mean, you could leave it like this and maybe, you know, sharpen out the corner a little bit. And, um, you know, maybe, you know, we'll do this. Basically come right up to the corner and just try to sharpen that. But it's, it's difficult because it's not really showing a real significant shadow. Right, and come back in this direction and really try to get right up there and create a corner. I'm going to show you a trick. So I don't know if you've ever seen any of the old um, stone carving masters, but a lot of times for stone carving, obviously stone carving very little bit little color all right occasionally they're painted but generally you know you look at like michelangelo david or something and um you generally there's no color so when you have something like you know a face all right so the edges of lips they tend to be the only thing that designates the edge of a lip is um, color, right? When you're looking at a human face, a lot of times, you, for from a sculptural standpoint, when you're not dealing with different colors, you actually create an edge that signifies change in color. Same thing with eyes. Obviously, it's not a physical edge that um, is the the pupil and the iris, but it's actually carved to create an edge that actually creates the the edge of or or the transition between from one color to another. So same thing with this. You can take and kind of trick the eye. You don't want to get too aggressive with this, but basically I'm going to take a V-chisel, very tiny V-chisel, and I'm just going to make a very slight corner. I know it doesn't make sense because it's going in, <laughs> but we're just doing this as a kind of a shadow, right? So your eye is going to look at that and say, oh, there's a straight line there. That means that's a corner. 
And so there's enough information on this. There's enough information that you're looking at right there that that says, okay, that is sort of starting to look like a box, all right? So your brain is saying it's recognizing it. And if I take a V-chisel and very lightly go along that way, and very lightly go along that way or that way, in fact, I'm not sure if I need to along the top because that's actually showing up. Um, but if I just take that, it's going to be that final clue that your brain's going to be saying, ah, that's a corner, even though it's really not a corner. <laughs> it's a V cut. So again, it's a, it is a, a an accent line. Ooh, squeak. All right. So I'm going to take, this is a, a three millimeter V chisel. And of course, I don't even have that. I, it's coming up as a four millimeter V chisel, but that's okay. It is a three millimeter. Um, now I'm going to go very, very tiny and just enough. You know what I need to do though? I sort of lost the straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it on again. Since I erased it all. Okay. So right down at the bottom there. And try to go as very delicately on there. Without without getting too deep to actually see the fact that it's a, a V cut. Right? There, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and do it on these also. So if you ever have an opportunity to study some of those stone carvings of faces, you'll see that quite often the edges of the lips, especially like the really, really, um, what, the really classical styles, the edge of the lip, it's actually got a tiny little little edge around it, which you would never actually see in a real face, but it shows the change of color. You gotta be careful too when you're doing this, just not to go so deep. It's just a almost like drawing, very lightly drawing. Of each of them. Okay. All right. So you can kind of see now. Oh, that's not showing up at all. <laughs> let's do. Let's let it look at it like this. Okay. So it shows up a little bit better. Um, anyway. So that's basically. It. You've got a plane there, a plane there, high spot there, and then this slightly angle down. Right. So anyway, just a little trick. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve this circle. Now, if you've carved the donut, you know exactly where I'm going with this one. But uh, quite often when you're carving something round to make it look like a ball, it's really just a curve around the very outer edge. Now, I kind of like to use the rule of However deep you've taken it in the background, you take it in about that far and then a little bit further to blend it. So we really want more of an aggressive, um, an aggressive curve. Okay, so for instance, so you've got, you're looking at it from the side. Let's see, lots of bumps. You're looking at it from the side, rather than have it like this, which you would think, well, wait a minute, it's curved all the way. So I curve it from the base all the way to there. But if you carved it, this is a side view. If you carved it that way, it would actually look very, very flat. And so the trick, again, this is all tricking the eye, is basically, so you've got to curve like that, like that, and then like that. Right, so it's really just a curve this way, just a curve that way. And I like to use the example of a quarter, and I don't even have a 
quarter in my pocket. No, I can't share that. <laughs> but um, if you look at if you look at a quarter, um, basically, if you see, you can see the outer edges of the face, the outer edges of the the profile of the nose, the forehead, the edge of the hair. That's where the majority of the shaping is done, and all the details within the face, the eyes. That's very very subtle. And so again, your your eye is seeing it, your brain is recognizing it as that's a face, and it's just you know you're carving just enough uh, hints that your brain is basically going to fill in all the missing details. Now the interesting thing about that theory of basically just giving hints and giving just enough clues for your brain to understand it, if you are carving something. Um, abstract, it wouldn't work because your brain wouldn't recognize it. But if it's something that you recognize, a face, um, a ball, um, you know, something that you know is round or, or you know is a particular shape, your brain will fill in the blanks. But if you're doing something just sort of more random in a bunch of shapes and you're trying to make it look uh, in perspective, it can be a little confusing because your brain is saying, well, what is this supposed to be? You know, it, it only really works for, <laughs> for recognizable um, details, recognizable objects. And so then, you know, otherwise we're like looking at it all confused. <laughs> That's my theory anyway. Okay, so now this circle, so you start at the top. All right, I'm going to make marks at each quadrant all right now again if you've carved the donut you'll know exactly where we're going here starting this is a grain direction thing so basically grain is going like this and i'm going to round this over from here going in this direction this direction this direction and this direction so if you have not carved the donut i really would encourage you to because it is one of the best ways to understand grain direction. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take just a flat chisel. Um, and, you know, so, so far, what have I used? Um, really, V chisels, a flat chisel, and a number three, 14, oh yeah, and a, and a number two, um, 220. So really very limited amount of tools. I can basically take this and Take that first outer corner out, all right? Just take that corner from that there to there, and then just continue to take corners away. So if you look at this, what I'm starting to do is, so you've got like this. First one, take an edge off. Take a facet about 45 degree and then next one you take a little bit more next one you take a little bit more and then you can kind of refine it and then eventually you will have a nice smooth quarter round really is what we're trying to do so just keep kind of repositioning it and just taking little tiny sections off and then, of course, fade it into there. And this is where I'm erasing my arrow. So looking at it from the side, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Well, wait a minute. Why are, Why wouldn't you just, you know, do a curve the whole thing? But there's actually going to be quite a large flat spot. Now, also think about what's happening here. I'm. Um, there's not as much depth here because we, it's basically running into the wall of that. So just keep that in mind. Still want to have it look like it's the same curve, but we just don't have as much depth on this side as on the other side. Now, the, one of the trickiest parts is this area right at the top there, because you have to kind of feel it and see where does the grain change, and you just have to do some kind of small test cuts, because it's right at that top of the hill. 
And if you start too far over here, it's going to snag. So you want to just do a lot of little, little test cuts. All right, and I'm going to go on the bottom here. There's no rush. Just take your time with it and just find the shapes. Okay, so what I'm trying to also do is kind of blend it into the flat surface so there's not a real obvious transition between um, the outer edge, the outer curve, and I just have to get rid of some of these arrows. Okay, now um, also what I want to do now is I want to do a little bit of even aggressive um, undercutting. And because, again, this is supposed to represent a ball, and if you can see those outer edges, then it's going to kind of lose the illusion. So a little bit of an undercut, and then it'll really kind of give it that much more dimension to it. So that's another way you can make it look like it's there's a lot of shadow behind it. And then, of course, when I do that, now I have to round it a little bit more because it created a bit of an edge. <laughs> All right, so that and that. And I don't know what happened to my little scrubby brush. I'm going to try to do that. Okay, so you can kind of see now straight on. Now this this is pretty much a, uh, a flat from about there all the way, all the way that's flat. But again, is if you um, just kind of trick the eye. Now I'm actually gonna do something. I don't like to do this with this, but the the interesting thing about this is because you can see a transition between the planed and the carved, I'm just going to take very, very fine sandpaper. This is actually, I know I hear, I hear the gasps on the uh, online, <laughs> but I just want to take and blend it so that you don't see the, the difference between the tool marks and that flat surface. Sometimes it just must be done. This very fine, this is actually what, um, make sure it's Merca. It's actually 180, but it's not 180. It's probably more like 400 because it's been used way, way, way more than it should. But try to go as much as you can go with the grain so it doesn't change the texture of it. Okay. And so you can see as, you know, looking straight on, you can do the same thing here. The difficulty with sanding carvings is once you do one area, you kind of have to do it all. And this isn't really one of those where you're going to lose much definition um, if you do. Okay. So, so do you see now this, uh, that, just that simple V, um, I think I might have gone a little bit deep there, so it looks too obvious, but you can really kind of give that, um, give that illusion or accentuate the, sort of the, the vanishing points and all of that, all right? So it really is, I don't even know, that's probably not even an eighth of an inch deep. So sideways makes, looks, no, makes no sense at all. 
but as you start looking straight on, right, that's pretty much how, how to trick the eye. So, um, well, I think that's, I think that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, just play around with it and see and experiment and, um, you know, have fun with it. But, um, yeah, I think that's about it for tonight. So um, I'll probably be doing another live stream um, uh, in another two weeks. I'm going to be gone next week to Michigan, uh, teaching it at Sam Buford Woodworking Institute in Adrian, Michigan. So anyway, it's good to see all of you. I know that was a little um, more of a basic project, but um, yeah, a lot of, lot of little important lessons on that. So... Anyway, happy carving, everybody, and have a great weekend. For those of you in the, the Midwest and the North, enjoy all the fall colors because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, anyway, happy carving, and thanks for joining. Bye-bye.